So what is the history behind Hyundai's N-Line exactly? Well, let's find out. So what is Hyundai's N-Line exactly? Well first we need to clarify what Hyundai's N-Line is. Hyundai's N-Line should not be confused with Hyundai's N. Lineup. What? And I think that's exactly why people tend to confuse the two because N-Line and N mean two different things and you can say N-Line when you're referring to the N lineup of cars and somebody else might be saying N-Line in regards to an N-Line car. So, Hopefully you understand what I'm saying there, but that's why people tend to confuse the two. Now, N vehicles such as the Veloster N, Kona N, Elantra N, i30N, and others overseas are Hyundai's highest performing vehicles that are track capable. These are designed to be excellent daily drivers while also having that track capability, and Hyundai says they need to meet three criteria to be considered an N vehicle. Hyundai says they need to be a corner rascal, an everyday sports car, and be track capable. Now ultimately, N cars are meant to put a smile on your face both on the street as well as the track, and even though they might not be the top tier performance in their segment of vehicle, they definitely are very competitive in the segment, and again, they are an everyday sports car. Now when it comes to Hyundai's N line, such as the Elantra scene behind me, that's where things get a little bit interesting. So I would argue N line started way before the actual nameplate was introduced. Hyundai created several models over the years under the R-Spec or Sport name that featured more powerful engines and enhanced suspension tuning among other differences. Some of you might remember the Genesis Coupe R-Spec, the Veloster Turbo R-Spec, Elantra Sport, and Elantra GT Sport. Now as time has passed, these more enthusiast models have been cut from the lineup and now only one of these four vehicles has a successor here in North America, the Elantra Sport, now known as the Elantra N-Line. So the N-Line name was first introduced in North America for the 2019 mod year with the Elantra GT N-Line. Fun fact, I actually own one. The Elantra GT is known as the i30 hatch around much of the world, so just know Elantra GT, the GT equals hatch. This car has always been somewhat differentiated from the Elantra sedan because the i30 or Elantra GT is primarily designed for the European market but was sold globally for a short while. Anyways, going back to the first N-Line in North America, it offered enhanced performance over the Elantra GT Sport, which was already a large step up over the base Elantra GT. The GT N-Line brought stiffer spring rates with revised shock tuning, stiffer engine and transmission mounts, revised sway bar diameters, and new steering calibration, plus summer tires if you opted for the manual transmission. All these mechanical differences were paired to the N-Line's exterior and interior appearance changes that were inspired largely by the i30N overseas. The Elantra GT N-Line was technically discontinued before any other N-Line was available in the market here in North America, but the next two that eventually came along were the Elantra N-Line and Sonata N-Line. These followed a similar formula of enhanced performance via a unique, more powerful engine and suspension tuning compared to their respective base models. So based on these vehicles, one might start to assume, okay, these are a good middle ground between those base models and the N-Cars given they offer performance enhancements but aren't necessarily track ready. Well, not so fast. Hyundai released the Kona N-Line and Tucson N-Line for the 2022 model year, and let's just say the Kona N-Line offers the 1.6 liter turbo engine, which is at least a step up over the base engine found in the Konas, but the 1.6 turbo is also shared with the Kona Limited. So is it unique? No. The Tucson, on the other hand, offers no performance enhancements over the regular Tucson's solely appearance differences. Hyundai says N-Line is characterized by the specific design and performance enhancing elements. Sharing powertrains with its regular Hyundai siblings, the N-Line vehicles are instantly recognizable by differentiated design elements. So in other words, cosmetic differences. Now if you want to learn more, Hyundai has a dedicated website with most of the N history on it and some key events, so make sure to take a look. I will leave a link in the description below. Essentially, the brand evolved heavily from their WRC participation dating back to 2013, which also eventually led to TCR racing. So let me know down in the comment section below what you guys think of the Hyundai's N line of cars. 
Now, personally, I thought it was a great opportunity for Hyundai to offer actual performance and mechanical differences over the base cars, coming in at a more affordable price point. But over the years, Hyundai has chosen which ones get actual performance enhancements and which ones only get cosmetic differences, which to me kind of dilutes the N-Line brand into nothing more than an appearance package and the occasional actual performance advantage, again, depending on the model. Now, personally, I've enjoyed my Elantra GT N-Line immensely. It is a great car. It definitely shows European roots compared to some of the other models in the Hyundai lineup, especially at the time, given some of the interior material differences, overall design and ergonomics of the interior, stuff like that. It definitely shows that it was not necessarily designed primarily for Americans or just people in North America. But with that said, if you guys are interested in sporty daily driver sedans, that kind of just a commuter car for you or want to have a little bit of extra fun over the base models, I would definitely take a look at the Elantra N-Line and Sinata N-Line because they definitely offer performance advantages over the base models, like I said, including different engines, transmissions, uh, different spring rates, and some additional tweaks under the skin in addition to those appearance differences. And as goofy as it might sound, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a Palisade N-Line or N or even a Santa Cruz N-Line in the future. Heck, with the 2.5T, eight-speed dual clutch, all-wheel drive, maybe lower an inch, inch and a half in terms of suspension, I could get behind that. So that's gonna wrap up this video on the history of the N-Line brand, just to give you guys a little bit of a background story of kind of how this evolved from the sports into the current N-Line models. So if you guys enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please hit that like button. It greatly helps out these videos and the channel. And if you guys are not subscribed, make sure to hit that subscribe button for videos just like this in the near future. Turn on the bell notifications so you guys are notified when I post a video here on the channel. Most days I post a video around 10 a.m. in the morning. So let me know down in the comment section below which one of these cars do you actually prefer? Do you prefer the older Elantra Sport styling or do you prefer the new Elantra N-Line styling? Personally, I think there are two different people that more like the kind of mature design language of the Sport or the more edgy design of the N-Line. Uh, honestly, I do like the N-Line, but I think if I honestly had to choose, I'd take the older Elantra Sport design. Um, and I kind of like the packaging a little bit better on the Elantra Sport, especially with the tech package uh, versus the Elantra N-Line, which doesn't have any additional packages. It's just one trim. You get what you get and uh, you don't throw a fit. And if you're curious about more details about the new 2023 Elantra N-Line, I have a dedicated walk-around video here on the channel just for that. I do go over some of the changes as well, but unfortunately for 2023, the Elantra N-Line can no longer be had with a manual transmission. So if you want a very similar car, you'll have to go to the Kia Forte GT, which still luckily does offer the manual. So once again, hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Let me know down in the comment section below which one of these two vehicles you guys prefer. And as always, hope to see you guys in the next one.